Hi guys, this is uh, another extract from my book. Graceful thoughts there. Very handsome chap on the back there. You know, before my eyesight problems kicked in. The thing about all of these videos for me and me about how I'm promoting the work that I do is all to promote alternative thoughts. I'm a very basic guy. I'm not ego driven. I'm one of these people that say it as I see. I don't want to court controversy or anything like that. I just want to help people. That's at the heart of what I do. Uh, I've led a very uh, eclectic life. Again, if you've read any read any of anything that I've had published or anything that I've produced on here as a video, you will soon realise that. So in one of my flatter moments where I didn't have much work coming in, I was actually working, um, unloading pet products from shipping containers. Very, very mundane trap task, very, very boring. But at the end of the day, it brought in some money. So to give you the context again, this was uh, just before lockdown came in. It was uh, where what work I could get while I could get it and and how I managed to sort of navigate my way through all of that sort of thing and my eclectic thought process as usual. So I give you pigeon and the container. Over the last few years, I've undertaken and passed many courses. My most recent being analytical hypnotherapy, coupled with neuro-linguistic programming practitioners course. And you might understand how this has given me an insight into how either myself or another person thinks. Part of what I've learned is to spot patterns of behavior and how specific programs may be being run based on an individual's experiences. Part of the process of studying is the ability to self-analyze. And what I have come to realize is that both courses have a common thread running through them. Both of my tutors said the key to analyze and an analysis is twofold. One, building rapport so that you can see how a client processes information and two, using what the client gives you to work with. I pondered as I tended to do and decided to run a scenario in my mind. In this particular scenario, I would play both parts. One being that of the client and the other being the therapist. Preparation for this was relatively simple in its construction. Place me in an, em an alien environment, gradually change the stimulus surrounding me and observe and record my findings. A change in circumstances had disrupted my everyday work life. It is irrelevant what these ch changes are. All I can say is that I am now in a state of enforced change. Now, as regular readers will know, I am not a great lover of authority or rules, but I accept that if you are being, that if people are paying you to do a job, you have to conform or you don't get paid. I will attempt in these next few paragraphs to guide you through my thought processes. I, as the client, will tell you from 51 years of experience that I don't do boredom in any form. So over the years, I've developed strategies to help me cope with any perceived boredom. It is merely mind management, in my view, that gives me the distraction and helps me to not focus on the discomfort of boredom. For the last few months, I've found myself unloading shipping containers to earn a wage. It is both tedious and repetitive, and I've found it essential to find something to fill in my head with than, rather than to focus on the monotony. This is where the intelligent mind management comes in. If I can't rein in those negative thoughts, I won't be there very long. Therein lies a problem. On one hand, I'm grateful that the money is coming in, and on the other, I have my intense dislike for boredom. In the factory I am there is always a big clock on the wall at the time, seemingly crawled by if I was facing it. So I asked to work in the container so I couldn't see it. I solved the problem with a straightforward solution. A second problem was not so easily solvable, and that was the monotony of the job. It was the nature of the beast as the task had to be completed. As the therapist in this scenario I had to look at what the client had presented me with, doesn't like boredom or repetitious tasks, but accepts the tasks, however mundane, need completed. My thoughts were, can we use an effective strategy to distract the mind from the tedious task? And a suggestion was formed. I congratulated the client for the flexibility of the mind and for accepting what can't be changed. I ask him to look around his environment and tell me 
what he saw. He says, I see a shipping container, 40 feet long, and it needs emptying and putting onto a conveyor. My task is to unload it. Probing further, I ask, is there anything else? Yes, he replied. I am facing the boxes and they are stacked 10 feet high. Okay, how do you feel? Disinterested was the reply. Right, what else can you see? Then let the client take over the narrative. I know that I am going to be bored. I am not fond of that feeling at all. And I don't like dead space in my mind that the subconscious could fill with negative thoughts. So I will need a distraction. I look around my environment and I see a pigeon who flies out of the warehouse. Where did he go? At that point, I didn't care as I am not a fan of pigeons at all. <laughs> Over the following hours, days and weeks, I became fascinated by the pigeon's movements. It seemed that it would make his first flight as I started at 7am. It would fly out and then return a short time later with a prize of either a twig or a wadding for what I assumed to be a nest building. It would carry on this routine repeatedly during the shift that I worked. It would fly out, come back, rest a while and then go again. While I observed this routine, I realised that focusing on the pigeon and its movements had taken my mind off my mundane task. For the first week, the pigeon didn't go far because there was an abundant supply of materials close to its nest. As time passed, supplies became more scarce. A decision now must be made, does it fly out further afield and risk uncharted territories like the busy road or the feral cat? I'm used that the pigeon would weigh up prize versus potential risk to see if the change was viable or not. The pigeon's antics became a staple of my day and it got me thinking. The only times that I saw the pigeon stop flying was when it was resting or darkness had set in. Was there anything I could take from my observation? So rest is, is needed after strenuous activity, as I have a firm belief that a tired head will tell you tired things. Secondly, will anything come from darkness? Will I yield anything productive that will help me achieve success in the future? No, I reckon not. I then analyse my current state of mind as I begin emptying the container. It isn't that good. I find the deeper into the box I go, the more my mood begins to darken. The light starts to fade and becomes darkness. I feel enclosed and trapped. This is not a nice feeling. Disturbing memories begin to fill my mind. I recognise this and now, and I know that I need a distraction. And there are two ways this current mood could play out. One, tiptoe towards a low mood and that could take some getting out of. Or two, strategize and use the experiences I've had over the years to get me through difficult times. I asked my mind to respond. And I began to notice specific steps in my routine took me closer to completion of the tasks that had been set. For instance, the conveyor will only reach so far in, so at the halfway point, it has to be stopped and pushed in. So that represents progress. At the three-quarter point, the floor in the container changes indicate that we're close to two things. One, the back wall, and two, the completion of the task. It is interesting to note that the darkest point of the journey is the one that is closest to the point of fulfillment and success. It is also at the point where I feel closest to giving up as I am physically and mentally exhausted. I need to see myself through that last line of boxes and I am over the finishing line. I switch off the conveyor and I turn around from the dark and I see the light streaming in at the other end of the container. I walk towards it with confidence as I realise, despite my doubts, I've achieved my goal. And I didn't give up when I was in my darkest moment. I persevered. The darkness didn't win and it didn't consume me either. I arrived back into the daylight and take in deep breaths of fresh air. I take a drink and ready myself for whatever is next. The moral of this story is that I encourage you to take whatever you need from my musings. I guide you to ask questions. Am I the pigeon who stays on task flying in and out of the storage environment to collect its bounty? All the while assessing, uh, is it worth the extra risk and uh, any results that can be gained from it? Overthinking gives you the results from the effort expended on it. Consider whether you would be better placed resting and reviewing, waiting for the darkness to pass and be ready to go again. Alternatively, are you the container unloader who has a task to complete but doesn't like it? a lot am i willing to accept things as they are or can i challenge the status quo 
Do you realise that during times of darkness that small changes may well be occurring, but are going unnoticed? You may well be in touching distance of the victory or the success that you desire, if you take time to notice what is going on. Do you realise that the point of, of mental and physical exhaustion, then it might be a pivotal point in your journey? So keep going. If you hang on just that bit longer, the journey towards the daylight is closer than you realise. I stand after completing my task and taking the sunlight again, and I embrace my surroundings and then begin preparations to go again. I close giving thanks to all that are involved in this scenario, the pigeon, the container, and even my eclectic mind. I used with the, what the client gave me and I use my experiences, both good and bad, to plot a route to success. I leave you with these thoughts. Every day that you wake up is a chance to go in, go again. Quite simply, never give up. And I'll just end that by saying that we're often closer than what we think to that turning point. It's just sometimes that we're focusing on the journey and the the obstacles that we're currently experiencing so as as it said at the end of that chapter don't give up so keep going out there guys and girls and being the true authentic you manage your mind strategize on how you deal with boredom and your eclectic thoughts and go out there and shine like the stars that i know that you are thank you once again for spending some of your life's hours and life's minutes watching me it all is all appreciated. Stay tuned um, and hopefully there will be much more content to come. Bless you all. Thank you for watching.